So this lash video is one of a series of lash videos I've done where I'm talking about product safety in the lash industry, talking about unregulated products and the dark side of the industry and the truth of what goes on. Now, if you haven't watched my first video in this series, go and please watch it. It just talks about how I became seriously allergic to lash adhesive back in 2014 after two years of lashing and how that led me on a journey to produce UK made safe glues and lash liquids that have been able to allow me to lash again without any issues for the last, what, nine years now. So it is possible, but I don't want anyone to be there. I don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through because that was how I earned my money and I loved my job. And I know that many lash artists are getting really sick and having to step away from a career that they love. So this is why I'm a massive advocate for product safety, for uncovering what goes on in the lash industry that no one likes to talk about and why I only sell UK made safe lash glues and liquids, which I distribute across the globe. Uh, we have wholesale and private label or white label options available. So if you're somebody that is looking for your own lash label, I have white label options available. So you too can ensure that you are selling the most safest products out there. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about the truth about a product being UK compliant. So I get into arguments with lots of UK lash suppliers that don't like me because they buy their lash liquids from the Far East and I could buy mine from the Far East. There's no regulation stopping me. Check out my other videos to learn why. But they choose to buy from the Far East because they can buy their lash glues and liquids for about a dollar. Whereas if you buy from UK manufacturers, we don't have many of them here, you'll pay a lot, a lot, 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 lot more than that. And you'll make very little profit on it. But I do it for passion, not for profit. I do it for profit. They don't like it when Frankie Widow comes along and <laughs> exposes the truth of what goes on in the industry and how despite them having millions and million pounds in the bank and you can look at their accounts through company's house, they still choose to go to the Far East to buy their crappy lash liquids and because they make more profit and they say it's fine because they're UK compliant. They're on the portal, they're UK compliant. UK compliant means NAFL, unfortunately. Now in the UK, yes, don't get me wrong, we have much higher standards for manufacturing, of all sorts of things, you know, our health and safety, workplace practicing, the quality of the ingredients that we use, you know, how things have to be tested so much. We have very high standards, but when it actually comes to something like ensuring a product is UK compliant, when I learned about this, I was like, oh my God, I'm so shocked because I was always like, at first, like when I first started doing this, I was like, how are people able to get lash liquids, glues and adhesives from the Far East and make them UK compliant? Like, surely when they're testing them and they're looking at the ingredients and the stabilizers, so my manufacturers, they have their own team of toxicologists that work with them in their own labs where they produce our lash liquids and glue. They actually get um, products from the Far East and test them for the, because it helps with their research and development of their product. Oh my God, the crap that they found in these, lash adhesives and these companies are selling it and, and big companies and I spoke about this in another video there's big companies out there both in the UK and across the globe big 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 USA companies that you'll all know you'll all know this big USA company they have two ingredients in their lash glue which are banned in the UK and cause serious respiratory issues and have been shown to cause fertility in test rats and they can't test it on humans for obvious reasons but this big company is selling this glue with these ingredients in it. And I've had people say, oh, Frankie, but it's such a small quantity. It doesn't matter. It's only tiny, tiny. Do you know what? If you go and talk to product experts, um, and I've had the pleasure of speaking to so many, they say, Frankie, it doesn't matter what level it's in this glue. That should not be in a beauty grade product. If it's Even if it's industrial use, the guys that use it are kitted up with PPE. You guys are putting this near the eyes with no PPE in a beauty product. They're, and this is the expert saying it. So this is just insane. Anyway, I digress. I go back to where <laughs> I was before. So going back to UK compliant, we have this portal in the UK and I'm keeping it very, very simple. So if you bring a product in from the Far East, first of all, you have to register yourself as a responsible person. And secondly, you then have to put in a load of details on this portal um, to tell them what the product is. So it's things like you need to have your um, list of ingredients, you need to have like your product packaging, uh, photographs of your product packaging, are there any uh, nanomaterials in there? 
there's a, a long list of things that you have to basically fill in for it to be UK compliant. Now I did a test on this and um, I basically made a product up. I made a product up and it passed. Ah, oh, okay. This is just insane. So when companies argue, especially here in the UK, well, it doesn't matter that we buy from the Far East because they're UK compliant. I'm sorry, but it's bollocks. It's freaking bollocks, okay? Why in a country like the UK where we have such strict regulations on manufacturing, are we allowed to import products from the Far East that the bottle never gets open? I would assume that if you're registering a product, you would pay money to register this on a UK portal and that would cover the cost of toxicologists opening your product and testing it to ensure that what is written on the ingredients list and the material safety data sheet is actually what is in that bottle. No, it's literally done of something that you type in, they look at it and go, okay, that's fine. And then they will add it on the portal. Isn't this insane? Now, most of the material safety data sheets that come out of the Far East are forged anyway. They're not right. They're just, yeah. unfortunately, unless you, Unless you really know what you're looking at with the material safety data sheet, most of you won't even know that they're false or they're just made up. And even I struggle to, to, to understand them at times, but I just found this crazy. So if you ever get a company that is originally sourcing their products from the Far East and they're saying it's UK compliant, it's nonsense. And I've spoken in depth with my manufacturer and I've been like, Look, how, how are these companies like, is there any liquids out there that actually can be UK compliant? It's not that we've seen. We have not seen one product that actually, if they were honest, would pass UK compliant if they actually opened the bottle and tested the cheap ingredients in there. And if this is what UK compliant means, what's the point in having it? Like, the only time somebody may ever get found out would be, let's say, if your product was listed as UK compliant, somebody made a, a, a complaint, Trade and Sounds come up after you, asked to see the CPSR, which is this report on the product safety, and then took the product away and actually tested it. That is the only way in which that bottle would ever be open to test what is in it was written on the UK compliant form that you've basically submitted. I'm just keeping it simple here. And this goes on in the UK. This is the UK, which is meant to have the strictest regulations in the world. So God knows what goes on in the Far East when we're talking about it. So yeah, that's a little bit of a background on big companies, especially in the UK, big fancy companies, which I upset all of the time because compared to them, I'm not a big fancy company. I'm a passionate company, which doesn't want anyone to be where I was back in 2014. I spend a lot more on my products and I don't sell them for any more. But yeah, I source them from the UK. I could go to the Far East. I could buy all of them, put a fancy label on it, sell it to you guys, rub my hands together. I don't care about you or your health, but I don't want that. But these companies have got millions in the bank. They, they, they operate in the UK. They can go to UK suppliers to get their ethical products, but they choose not to. Go figure. What do you reckon that's about? Okay, it doesn't take a freaking genius to figure that one out. So there you go, guys. Truth about UK compliant products and why it's a load of absolute toots. Now, don't forget, if you like this video, give it a like. Don't forget to check out my other videos in this series as well, where we're discussing this topic in a lot more detail. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. I don't always get notifications and I don't I don't surf social media all of the time because it's not good for my mental health. So probably best off to email me. You can find contact details. I'll try and remember to put them in the comments below. But you can find contact details on the website eyelashexcellence.com. And I hope to see you at another video.